MF Doom. He's one of the most enigmatic artists in all of music, and probably the main reason you clicked on this video. And today, I'll be going over a collection of Doom related trivia and tidbits. Now, I'm not basing any of this off a pre existing iceberg. Instead, I've personally handpicked each of these topics myself. I have, however, created an image to go along with my iceberg, and I'll be posting it on Reddit for the rest of the internet. There'll be a link to it in the pinned comment. Lastly, with research, writing, voicing, and editing, among other things, this video took me a long time to put together. So if you appreciate the work I put in, please leave a like on this video. It only takes a split second of your time, but means the world to me. I hate having to insist on this at the beginning of nearly every video, but nowadays, chances are, if a video doesn't get enough engagement, YouTube won't allow it to be seen by a wider audience. Is it modern day YouTube fun? Uh, no! All caps when you spell the man's name is a common tagline associated with Doom. It originates from the classic track All Caps, where Doom says, Just remember all caps when you spell the man's name. So if you're on the internet and god forbid you don't capitalize Doom's name, you'll likely get some people correcting you or insisting you slap on caps lock before typing his name out. Personally, I do go out of my way to capitalize his name in my titles and descriptions as well as most comments, but it's not something I'd get upset about if someone else didn't do. It's not that big a deal if you ask me. You're a phony! This guy's a great big phony! Till this day, Doom's death is shrouded in secrecy. Doom originally passed away on October 31st of 2020, but we wouldn't find out till 3 months later on New Year's Eve, when MF Doom's wife, Jasmine, went on MF Doom's Instagram and posted this now notorious send-off. What a great way to end the year. 2020 sure gave us the middle finger on the way out the door. The exact cause of Doom's death remains unspecified. Even Madlib didn't know Doom had passed away. In regards to that, Madlib said, We talk like once or twice a year, but that's how it's always been. We talked last year and everything seemed fine. Truthfully, I'm not too surprised that we know as little as we do. Doom has always kept his personal life on the low, opting instead to preserve his privacy. Doom at that point started to get the point that y'all, that the, 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 the people out here are not necessarily down for the music and down for the artists. It's just who can gather enough uh, noise and, 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 and draw attention to themselves the best. Doom choosing to value his privacy in this way is something I respect, as he became popular without needing to make a fool of himself on social media like so many people nowadays. Doom's music has merit, in spite of Doom being in the mainstream spotlight or not. It seems like commercial success is confused for artistic validation. So to answer Doom's question, Is he still a fly guy clapping if nobody ain't hear it? Yeah, I think he is. Cheetos Doritos Fritos is a meme that originates from a lyric off the track Accordion. This meme was popularized on Twitter and Reddit, and I think that alone speaks for itself. This meme manages to lack creativity while also leaving very little room for iteration. It's just a one-off joke with the same punchline and setup nearly every time. And don't get me wrong, there are exceptions. Some of the more nuanced variations of this meme are a little more humorous in my opinion. But unfortunately, I find the majority are bland, repetitive, and very predictable. And that would be completely fine on its own, I mean, it's just a meme. However, I find that this meme ends up doing more harm than good. You see, my true beef with this meme is that it unintentionally trivializes MF Doom. What am I talking about? Well, someone who doesn't know much about Doom will see one of these vapid memes, and instead of bothering to find out who Doom actually is, they'll simply say, MF Doom? Oh, that's that Cheetos Doritos Frito rapper. Absurd. Relax, it's not a big deal. It's undermining. And it's the kind of stuff I'm teaching my kids not to do. So I don't want to hear it again. End of subject. No, but seriously, I'm not the word in the meme wanking, so if you find this meme absolutely hysterical, then more power to you. KMD was Daniel Dumoulin's old rap trio from the early 90s. This was before Dumoulin's MF Doom persona had fully taken form. Back in the early 90s, Dumoulin was known as Zev Love X. Alongside him sat his younger brother, DJ Subrock, and the original third member was Rodan. Unfortunately, because of Rodan's immense size, he was unable to fit in the studio and was quickly replaced by Onyx the Britstone Kid. The trio was eventually signed by Elektra Records, known for signing bands like The Doors, Metallica, Queen, and many more. In total, KMD released two albums, and were abruptly dropped from their label after Subrock was tragically struck and killed by a car. 
I'm not going to go too in depth on KMD's entire backstory in this video as I believe they're worthy of an entire video on their own. So if KMD is something that interests you, subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss when I eventually make a video on them. And you can unsubscribe and turn off notifications afterwards. You want to hear the new song we just did? It's not finished, but yeah. The unreleased Doom albums refers to a whole array of different albums that have been speculated or rumored to exist. If you've been a fan of Doom for any amount of time, then you've probably heard rumors about an unreleased Doom album at some point, with the most recent example being Mad Villainy 2, a topic which I made a whole video on explaining why I personally believe it's more likely than ever before that we'll be seeing the album at some point in the near future. But aside from Mad Villainy 2, there are plenty more examples. Doom Starks, Swift and Changeable, KMD, Mental Illness, KMD, A Crack in Time, MF Doom and Flying Lotus, Mask the North Star, Dilla Doom, Zarface and MF Doom, Zarface and return of metal face and there's probably even more unreleased material that we aren't even aware exist if i missed any that you know of please leave a comment letting me know which i'd love to eventually do a video talking about all the unreleased doom albums after wrapping up a tour in Europe, Doom tried to come back home to the United States, only to be denied re-entry. Although Doom grew up in the US for much of his early life, he never actually bothered to become a permanent resident by acquiring his green card. So when he attempted to come back into the country, instead of being allowed in, Doom was barred from the US. Let me in. Let me in. He famously went on record saying he was done with the United States. This whole situation would become an encompassing theme throughout his next album, Key to the Cuffs. I'm here to see MF Doom refers to a format of meme that samples Mr. Fantastic saying MF Doom while remixing it over any different clip that you can think of. What you listening to, son? MF Doom. I like MF Doom. Oh God, it's all MF Doom. It's very much in the spirit of classic YouTube poop. To my surprise, this meme is actually pretty old. The first iteration was posted back in 2016, and I wasn't even aware of this meme until like mid-2020. But this ended up being one of my favorite MF Doom memes just because of how creative and interchangeable it is. No one of these videos are exactly the same, and it puts a lot of emphasis on the individual creativity, which is part of the reason I like it so much. Something which can't be said for all MF Doom memes. He's your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. This is a popular phrase that's been thrown around for a long time now, and you'll commonly see it in Doom related comment sections across the web. The reason people in general say this about Doom is because of the sheer amount of artists who respect him and the influence he's had on so many artists in general. This popular phrase is what led to me titling one of my videos as such. A lot of people are under the false impression that my video is what coined the saying, but that isn't true at all. While I don't know the exact origin of the phrase, I can tell you for sure that it was a popular saying long before my video, and I definitely didn't start it myself. You may I may argue that my video popularized it a little bit more, but definitely not where it originates from. Christmas with Doom is a short set of bumpers that were aired on Adult Swim during Christmas Eve of 2006. You're watching Christmas with Doom on Adult Swim, and now Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Roll! Basically, Doom would appear in between commercial breaks throughout the night, bantering to the audience. It's interesting to see Doom in something like this, and it makes me wonder why Adult Swim hasn't brought on more people to host nights like this on Halloween or Thanksgiving, for example. Unfortunately, because this took place way back in 2006, many of the re-uploads of Christmas with Doom are in very poor quality. I'm sure someone out there has a higher quality recording, and if not, then I'm almost certain Adult Swim has a high quality copy stashed away somewhere. Despite the shitty quality, it's still one of my favorite Doom related things. Let's descend to the depths of Monster Island. Monster Island Zards was a rap collective from the early 2000s. It was started by none other than MF Grimm, and Doom was of course a part of the collective. They only ever released one album, Escape from Monster Island. A lot of fans noticed that Doom's production improved vastly, becoming more immersive and cinematic on albums like Take Me To Your Leader. Personally, I think a lot of this improvement could be attributed to all the practice he got producing tracks for Monster Island Zars. Doom's production was already pretty good, but I think the time he spent with the Zars helped him to reach an even higher level of skill. But I could be wrong, I'm just speculating. I see very little mention of them here on YouTube, with only a handful of videos actually mentioning them, and zero videos talking about the group independently on their own. 
Lastly, some extra trivia. Doom actually references the Zars on the track El Chupa Nibre, saying, once joined the rap click midgets into crunk. There was also a remix of the same track with an alternate take by Doom. In this one, he says, once was in a rhyme crew, monkeys into crime. Remarks which MF Grimm took pretty personally, which led to him putting out a diss track calling Doom out, but that's a whole different story. There's this pretty obscure clip of author Mike Lupica on MSNBC talking about Michael Flynn or something, I don't know. The funny part is that he quotes MF Doom of all things on cable television. I yeah. did, I was just gonna tell you that I know what you were thinking about Mike Flynn today, it was the old MF Doom line, snitches telling all their business, sitting in court and being their own star witness. <laughs> A lot of people say it's cringy, but honestly, I think it's great. You can find the full clip here on YouTube. As many of you know, Doom loves writing his music from the perspective of different characters, some of which having entire albums dedicated to them. For example, Victor Vaughn on Venomous Villain, King Ghidorah on Take Me To Your Leader, and many more. Many of these characters make cameos across his entire discography, like King Ghidorah on Red and Gold off Operation Doomsday, or Victor Vaughn on Mad Villainy's Fancy Clown. Doom's approach to these personas are pretty interesting, and there's a lot more to say about these characters, so I'd rather dedicate a whole video to them. It's pretty well known among fans that for many of his live shows, rather than actually performing himself, Doom would send someone else with the mask on to perform in his place. These imposters have been dubbed Doombots. These Doombots are one of the stunts MF Doom is most infamous for. There's plenty of videos online of fake Dooms performing on stage. Now this isn't exactly Doombot related, but one of my favorite clips is this video of Doom flipping his mask up to prove it's really him and not a Doombot. Many fans have reasonably criticized Doom for his use of imposters at live shows, but surprisingly, just as many have come out in support of Doom, with many fans claiming that sending Doombots out is exactly what a supervillain would do. Now, I have my own thoughts on this, but I'll save that for another video since I think this is a very interesting and complex topic worthy of its own video. There is this old video from 1992 of a 19-year-old Doomalay during his KMD era appearing before Congress. If you watched this clip before, then you might have come away unsure about what exactly Doom was even testifying for. So here's some context. In the 80s, music was bombarded by waves of censorship, which at first was predominantly aimed at heavy metal. This whole controversy is where the parental advisory sticker originates from. And by the late 80s and early 90s, the censorship took aim at rap groups. So as a way to fight against this BS censorship, Steve Barr and the founder of Virgin Records, Jeff Aroff, created a nonprofit known as Rock the Vote which is still active to this day. The intention of Rock the Vote was to get more young people to vote, specifically to vote for politicians who wouldn't censor music. This would be implemented by allowing people to register to vote at the DMV when getting their driver's license, which is what Doom and Onyx alongside Steve Barr were advocating for in this old video. We're from K the rap group KMD. Now, I'm 19 years old, right? And um, before three months ago, when I first met Steve Barr, I really knew nothing about politics. I didn't deal with it. I didn't, you know, I wasn't into it, right? But on the other hand, I was into cars, or I knew what kind of car I would like to get, or, you know what I'm saying? So, when he introduced me to this um, motor voter bill, I saw, I mean, f as soon as he introduced me to it, I saw the change that it could make it was in me, because it made the change in me as soon as, you know what I'm saying, the first day he introduced me to the bill. In 2016, leaked photos of Doom officiating Egon's wedding were leaked into cyberspace. Egon was the general manager for Stone's Throw back in the early 2000s, and even helped to bring Mad Villainy together. While the photos were leaked in 2016, the wedding itself took place 7 years prior, in 2009. According to Egon, he called up Doom and asked if he'd be willing to officiate his wedding, to which Doom simply asked for the date. The following month, Doom showed up at Egon's house, at 3 in the morning, the day before the wedding. Which definitely sounds like something he'd do. The following day, Doom followed Egon around, taking notes in a leather book. Egon later found this book, curious to see what Doom had written, only to find a random assortment of shapes drawn. Which is hilarious to me. Egon was over here thinking Doom was taking thoughtful notes, only to find out that Doom had been drawing random shit. But overall, Egon claimed that Doom did a beautiful job officiating his wedding.
After KMD was disbanded and dropped by Elektra Records, Doom talked about how he lived near homeless in the streets of New York. I'm not too sure of the exact time frame, but it had to be somewhere between 1994 to 1997. Additionally, Doom says that he was near homeless, but honestly, if you're sleeping on benches, I'd call that homeless. Regardless, all the hardship Doom endured during these years is part of what led him to becoming the villain we knew. That's what Peggy is referring to in this interview. His come up was kind of strange, you know? He kind of was in the industry, and then he left the industry because of tragedy, and then he came back almost like on, re on some revenge shit or something. I don't know. It, it's kind of like he doesn't, it's, he's like the anti-hero to me. The true identity of Mr. Fantastic has been a topic of much debate for well over a decade now. Until this day, we're not sure who exactly Mr. Fantastic actually is. Some people speculated it was Rodan, the original third member of KMD and fellow Monster Island Czar member. Others for some reason thought it was Count Basty, which I never understood, they sound nothing alike. Though I even made an Instagram live disputing the claims. My guess is that it's just one of Doom's buddies who felt like spitting a few bars with his friend. Not really any deeper than that. Now here's one I never see people talk about, the MF Doom brand collabs. There's a couple that I know of, the most popular of which being the Nike SBs. These kicks were released way back in July of 2007. They're pretty cool in my opinion, they managed to scream Doom while still remaining minimalistic. They have Doom embroidered on the sides with art featured on the insoles and under the translucent sole, as well as a Doom mask on the tongue. But my favorite part has to be the buckles on the laces which spell out supervillain. These shoes were going for a couple hundred dollars a few years ago, but after Doom's passing, they're selling for upwards of $1,500. There's also the MF Doom New Era hats, as well as the Doom Clarks Originals. If you guys know any more, feel free to comment them below. There's an obscure movie called Less Miserable by first time writer and director Justin Limbaugh. The film features our beloved villain playing the role of a homeless man. It's only for a couple scenes, but that's definitely him. And it's kind of fitting that Doom would play a homeless character considering he actually spent some time living homeless in New York City. He also played this cop who can be seen towards the end of the film. MF Doom. Doom's roles in this film was credited to Victor Vaughn, and if you're interested in checking the movie out for yourself, you can find it here on YouTube. In season 4 of The Simpsons, in the episode Brother from the Same Planet, 14 minutes into the episode, graffiti on the wall spelling out Doom can be seen. Some fans have speculated that this is a nod to the masked MC. Now, this episode aired in February of 1993, long before Doomily was rapping under the MF Doom moniker. So if you ask me, it seems a little unlikely that this is a direct reference to Doom. It's more likely a coincidence, but you never know. In a 2011 interview, creative director of Stone's Throw, Jeff Jenks, opened up on his inspirations for the Mad Villainy album cover. He told the interviewer how he kept the cover in the court of the Crimson King in mind when creating the Mad Villainy album cover. He talked about how the King Crimson cover really scared him as a kid and he wanted Mad Villainy to do the same to other kids in the future. After adjusting the photo of Doom to be black and white, he noticed an unintentional yet striking resemblance to Madonna's self-titled debut. To finish off the cover, he decided to add some orange in the top right corner of the album, to make it a little more distinctive but also to match the orange that was on the Madonna cover. Are all the casuals gone? Good, because if you're still watching at this point, then that means you have a really good attention span, and that's pretty damn rare these days. That also means you're the exact type of person I would love to invite to my Discord server. As of now, I'm not going to bother advertising the server, instead I'm just going to let people like you trickle in over time. Honestly, I don't really care about filling the server up with random people. What I value a lot more is building a genuine connection with individuals like you, who actually care about my work and what I have to say. I'll leave the code in the description. And if you haven't left a like on the video by now, then uh, please take a second to do so. You guys already know how annoying the algorithm is about that. And lastly, if you think my content and I are worth going the extra mile for, then try posting my video on a Doom or hip hop related subreddit, Facebook page, or Discord server. You have no idea how tremendously that helps. And if you do actually post it somewhere, uh, post a link to it in our Discord server, that way the rest of us could see it. And even if you don't do any of that, just know I really appreciate you watching this video to the end. I go out of my way to put as many like extra minor details that the vast majority of people will just overlook. So the fact that people like you appreciate those minor details, uh, it 
makes this process of creating videos so much more gratifying and fulfilling for me. So yeah, thank you. Anyway guys, I'm gonna get to work for 30 hours on a video that will get 12 views. See you later. And I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Oh, <laughs>